When you are into a profession, you utilize the initial few years for building a base and then build your careers on it in later years. Unfortunately, that privilege is not accorded to academicians, especially those who stay in data-driven fields like economics. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Piyush and if you haven't subscribed to the TFI English channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. Coming back to the story, in this video, I'm here to tell you about the serial failures of coffee book economists. Recently, Raghuram Rajan, former RBI governor and renowned professor, praised Modi government's economic policies. On being queried whether India could face a crisis like those of Pakistan and Sri Lanka, Ranjan said that Indian government does not rely much on borrowing and that is why the debt on India is not that big which could initiate such a crisis. Ranjan also appreciated the central bank for maintaining a high amount of forex reserve and its interest rate regime. Ranjan's comments came as surprising for almost everyone well versed with his views on the Indian economy under the Modi government. In 2019, he had termed Narendra Modi government as autocratic and too centralized. In economic parlance, autocratic system translates to low productivity and hence low growth for the country. A few months later, when CAA and RC protests were at their peak, he pinned the blame for slow economic growth on the political and social policies of the Modi government. In the speech in which he appreciated India's economy, Rajan hinted that he agrees with leftist propaganda that minorities in India are turning into second-class citizens under the Modi government. But Rajan is not the only one whose predictions have gone wrong. The list includes well-known economists like Nobel laureate Amartya Sen, Abhijit Banerjee and New York Times taxi driver fame Koshik Basu as well. All these heroes of the left have accused the Modi government of being anti-poor and anti-minority among others. When the Modi government was providing free food to more than 80 crore Indians, Koshik Basu came up with the analysis that the government underestimates the suffering of the poor. When IMF report appreciating the Modi government for keeping poverty in check during the COVID came out, Basu shifted his focus towards polarization in society and stated that this particular phenomenon will impact India's growth. Amartya Sen told similar lines. In January 2022, he told leftist portal The Wire that the Modi government has no regard for the poor. In July, he even went on to Doomsday's prediction that India could collapse. The Nobel laureate is also scared like Amir Khan's wife. Another Nobel laureate, Abhijit Banerjee, went on to say that Indians are in extreme pain. It is pertinent to note that he cited his personal visit to West Bengal as an example and represented it as if it is the reality of whole of India. But the numbers as well as reality on ground, falsify their predictions about India. In spite of the alleged anti-Muslim image, Arab nations are rushing to invest in India. India's FDI numbers are sound and business sentiments are strong. The poor, which these economists claim to be sympathetic to, are participating in the economic growth. But they are not able to correct their fault lines. Here is how they falter. All of these economists are Ivy League educated. They took their economic lessons in the 70s and 80s and in Amartya Sen's case, much before that. During those days, the world was stuck with an extreme poverty crisis and human development indices were constantly down. For instance, even in the 1990s, the average human lived 64 years, while today, he lives around 72 years. India's story has been by and large similar. To solve this crisis, economic textbooks were most centered around welfare economics. It is here that Marxism chipped in as well. While the original goal of welfare economics was to provide the poor with that much wealth so that they could become happy consumers of capitalism-driven products, Marxism provided these economics professors with a potential to become the messiahs of the poor. They did get power, but unfortunately for them, after poor people started to realize their own human development potential, they refused to participate in messiahic revolutions. Now the proletariat of Marxism himself wanted to become 
bourgeois and governments of the day provided them with various schemes to fulfill this dream. What do you think the emphasis on self-employment aka entrepreneurship is all about? It is a symbol of human freedom not available to the majority of our ancestors. But old economists are addicted to the past and attention they get. Henceforth, keep on talking the same points. Another possibility is that Parroting words like poor and minorities among other liberal philosophies has become second nature for them. They may be promoting it out of instinct. 